Hey everyone, today we're going to be seeing what happens when you put a superconductor into a 15 kilowatt induction heater. Induction coils are a really cool way to heat things that are conductive. For example, look at this bolt that I'm just going to set in here, and I'm going to turn on the power to these coils around it and watch what happens. Whoa, it just immediately starts glowing bright red. So somehow by running power through these coils, which they're cold to the touch, this can get red hot. Pretty much on demand, I can turn this red hot just by pushing this lever here. Three, two, one. <laughs> if I stick some aluminum foil in here, I can just melt the aluminum foil. So what's cool about this way of heating stuff is because you don't have to have direct contact with the thing you're heating, for example, I can just stick this bolt in some water here. <laughs> Immediately starts heating up the water. So now watch how cool this is. I can get instant boiling with the touch of a lever. I just push this, boiling water. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> Gonna be holding it like this, push the lever and boiling. So literally anything conductive can be your heating element for the water here. I have here a 1943 steel penny and then a regular copper penny here. Let's see how both of these act in the induction heater. Okay, let's turn it on and watch. Look at the steel one. The way this works is because it creates a magnetic field line around these coils here. But the magnetic field alternates according to the AC current that we're running through it. And whenever you have a strong changing magnetic field, that can induce an electric current. So anything that's conductive that you stick inside of this coil, it's going to induce an alternating current inside of that. So there's going to be alternating eddy currents that look like this. The more resistance this metal object has, the more it's going to heat up. You can see that when we have a steel coin and a copper coin, the copper coin barely boils the water, but the steel coin boils it pretty vigorously. That's because the copper is a really good conductor, so it doesn't heat up as much as the steel when we induce a current inside of it. So that brings me to my original question. What would happen if we stick a superconductor inside of an induction heater? Remember that superconductors exhibit exactly zero resistance. As long as you keep it below the critical temperature, it'll stay in this superconductive state. So let's confirm this is acting like a superconductor right now. So you can see this is acting like a superconductor in there. It's able to lock this magnet in the air. Now take the magnet off the bottom Place it in here. So in order to tell if we're heating up the superconductor, I'm going to keep it in the liquid nitrogen. So just like with the boiling water, if we start seeing the liquid nitrogen boil more vigorously, that means that there's energy input into the superconductor and it's heating up a little bit, causing the liquid nitrogen to boil more. So in this way, we can easily see if the superconductor is heating up inside of the induction coil. So what's your guess? What do you think is going to happen when we put the superconductor in there? Okay, let's see what happens. Turn on the power and... Huh. It boils faster. And it keeps going for a second. Whoa. Huh. This is surprising. It's boiling it. It's actually boiling it. This is not what I thought was gonna happen. Make sure it's not just an effect from the liquid nitrogen. I just have a cup of liquid nitrogen here. It doesn't increase the boiling.
Note that the liquid nitrogen will always be boiling a little bit due to the heat from the room, but when I turn on the induction coil, then it boils even more vigorously. So why is this happening? The superconductor acts almost like this steel bolt here. Hold it down longer and it takes longer to cool down. So it turns out that this superconductor actually heated up inside the induction coil just the same way as the steel did. It actually seemed a little bit worse than copper even. So why did the superconductor suddenly act like it's a resistor inside of the induction coil? Well, there's a few reasons for this. The first reason is due to the London penetration depth. So if you place a regular conductor inside of a magnetic field, the magnetic field just penetrates it and goes through it like this. But if you put a superconductor inside of it, it goes around it, it deflects the magnetic field. Now for type two superconductors like I have, there are specific points where the magnetic field line will go through it. But the magnetic field lines don't just stop exactly at the skin of the superconductor. There's actually a little bit of depth in which the magnetic field lines penetrate. So that means the resistance inside a very thin skin around the superconductor isn't zero. Now this skin depth ranges from around 50 to 500 nanometers. But what makes that even worse is the fact that I put this in an alternating field. Now whenever you have an alternating current flowing through something, the higher the frequency, the more that current is actually flowing on the surface of the material and not inside of it. So that means that a superconductor in an AC field doesn't have zero impedance. In fact, it has an impedance similar to just a regular old conductor. So superconductors aren't that super inside of alternating fields. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. And if you hit the bell, you can also be notified when I release my latest videos. And thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.